Okay, so uh, thank you uh, everyone. So my name is Chung Wing Yang. Um, today I'm going to talk about um, the design consideration of a negative capacitance, FET. So, uh, so first uh, I'll give an introduction and then I will talk about some background of the negative capacitance, FET. And then we'll talk about some design considerations followed by some simulation results. And lastly, we'll conclude this talk. So transistor scaling in the last few decades have enabled um, the transistor size to keep scaling down. So um, at the same time, the voltage supply is also scaling down. So if we look at the 250 nanometer node, look back some history, the voltage was 2.5 volt. And then when go down to 180, the voltage is 1.8. So it, the VDD actually scale pretty well with the transistor size. And then at 130 nanometer, it is 1.3 volt. So next year, for example, uh, in the coming year, at 40 nanometer node, we should be looking at 0.14 volt VDD supply if the VDD also scaled accordingly. However, we're looking at 0.8 volt, which means we are wasting about 30 times energy if the VDD is continued to scale. So, so why, why is this the problem? Um, what causes this problem is because of the Boltzmann distribution of the carriers. For MOSFETs, the technology we're using today, carriers will be distributed. Um, the, there are some high energy carriers that can still pass through the battery even though we uh, lower the, uh, we control the, the voltage of the channel. Take an analogy, it's just, when, even though when we lower the passing score for a test, some best students just don't uh, study, then they will still fail the test. So we have to keep lowering the passing score until uh, we have no student fail. So, so that's the problem. So that's why we, we need a certain voltage to control the leakage current. That is the problem. And then so there are some um, existing some several uh, solutions that people are investigating to uh, try to break the 16 mineral per decade barrier. One of them is the TFAT, uh, the previous talk just mentioned. Another one is the feedback fat that used some internal feedback to make the device turn on suddenly. Today, I'm, I'm going to focus on this negative capacitance fat, which was proposed by Professor Saladin in 2008. That it, the structure is similar to MOSFET, except that the gate dielectric is replaced with a negative capacitance, capacitance element. In this case, we use ferroelectric as, as the element. And then the negative capacitance can amplify the gate voltage to make the swing smaller. So let's uh, look at the negative capacitance. So this is the Nandau theory of, uh, the, of the ferroelectric. So the, uh, this is the polarization versus the electric field. So when we increase the electric field, the polarization change, and then usually in the experiment, we'll look this, it will go up like that, and then we re reverse the electric field, and it goes up like that. But the theory predicts that there's actually a branch, a negative slope branch, but Experimentally, it is not stable, so it is very difficult to measure. Um, in 2011, um, Professor Salahuddin's student, Asif Khan, um, he po po uh, provided some ev experimental evidence showing that actually um, he measured uh, two capacitors. One is uh, just a dielectric. The other one is a dielectric in series with the ferroelectric. Actually, he measured this capacitance. It's actually larger than dielectric capacitance, which is unusual, because if both capacitors are positive, the series combination of the two should be smaller. This capacitance should be smaller. But he measured larger capacitance, so which is some indication of the net existence of negative capacitance. So, um, so then we continue looking at this, and we transform this polarization electric field into more familiar uh, graph, charge versus voltage. So the slope of this curve is the capacitance. So there, this branch is the positive capacitance, then this branch is the negative capacitance, and this branch is the positive capacitance. As a device engineer, I, I don't understand the physics too much about this, this device, uh, this material. I would just take it as a back black box. I, I would just treat it uh, using how to use this negative capacitance to make a transistor that will give less than 60 mV per decade swing. So, and then from now on, uh, when I talk about the cap negative capacitance, I will talk, I will refer to the CFE, is this, this, this branch. So this is uh, the device structure of, uh, of the negative capacitance fat. So 
the bottom, it is just like a mo regular MOSFET. So this is the, um, the representation of the capaci capacitance model. This is CR in series of the C depletion. And then on top of that, we just put another uh, fair electric capacitors in series with this, uh, this network so that um, it is uh, just nothing but uh, two capacitors in series, the CMOS and the CFE. So that uh, then we do the math, okay? So uh, what is the relationship between VG and VMOS? So it is just uh, this relationship, uh, voltage uh, divide, capacity voltage divider. And then because, uh, because we propose that CFE is, can be negative, so that then this equation become this, and then actually from this equation, we can immediately see that VMOS can be larger than VG because this term can be smaller than this term. So that there's there can be voltage amplification if this capacitor is negative. So that uh, we range that, so we become uh, the amplification due to the fur electric is uh, this term, okay? So, uh, so one thing we immediately see is that in order to get a large amplification, these two terms should be close. So that when we design the transistor, when we pick the uh, FCFE value, these two terms should be close. The CFE should be close to the MOS uh, capacitance value in order to have large capacitance, uh, large amplification. So now we look at the um, surface swing of the NC fat. So first, uh, because it is just a nothing but a MOSFET, so this is the standard MOSFET surface swing. And then when we add the capacitor, negative capacitor, so it will reduce the surface swing by a factor of the AV, okay? So then we, when we massage uh, this equation, then we'll get this form, nice clean form. Is uh, the surface swing of NC fat is one plus C def over CF minus C def over CFE. So this is, um, this is the equation when we uh, do some um, algebra. So that you can immediately, immediately see that if we want a surface swing of less than 16 millivolt, these two terms must be Right? This term must be smaller than this one so that this negative value will be larger so that when you minus that, it will be one minus some value. So that this is the condition for the CFE, the maximum value. CFE cannot be larger than the C aux in order to see the sub-16 minimum protective swing phenomenon. So this is important. So besides using equation, we can also use an um, uh, intuitive way to think how it works. It's, uh, when we look at this capacitance uh, network, we can think of it the CFE and the COX become a new capacitance, the COX prime. So looking at this just regular uh, series capacitance uh, equation so that if CFE is larger than COX, then COX prime is still positive, which means we're just using a positive uh, dielectric, so it cannot give um, it cannot get to less than 60 mm per decade swing. It's just a regular high K dielectric. So it means that this one must be smaller than CR, so that it sets the maximum values. And then, um, because I'm running out of time, so the third condition is how to make this device stable, because uh, usually people observe hysteresis, which is not good for transistor. So how to make it stable is, so that the swing must not be negative or infinite. So that when the feedback system, when it goes to infinite, then it means it will have hysteresis or not stable. So this is very important. So that means this term must be larger than negative one, larger than negative one to zero, actually. So that when we um, do some algebra, it means CFE must be larger than CMOS. So this sets the minimum value of the CFE. Previously, it says the maximum value. Now it says the minimum value. So there's a window of CFE we can pick in order to have a stable device and also have lower than 60 millivolt swing. So that, um, so this is, for example, this is the CMOS and this is the CRX. Usually, the CRX is very close to to CMOS, the total MOSFET capacitance. So put it in the picture so that CFE must be smaller than CRX so that we cannot use this, this value. And CFE must be larger than CMOS, so this is the only window left we can pick to choose the CFE, okay? So that, um, so that now this is, for example, in this case, if the MOSFET looks like this, then the CFE value we pick will be this, okay? So um, now, then we do some um, 
So there's uh, one problem. Is um, okay. So uh, there's one problem is it, because if we choose this CFE value, you see at this point, which is the surface swing, the difference is still large, which means the amplification is small. So it defeats the purpose of uh, have, having a large amplification in the surface region. So that we need to do some engineering to the MOSFET itself to make a flatter uh, MOSFET, C MOSFET um, CV. So this is what uh, we do. We use an ultra thin body, ultra thin buried oxide to try to increase the depletion capacitance so that to engineer the flat CV curve. So that we do some simulations and um, and then it turns out that uh, it shows that when you change the thickness of the C, the silicon thickness, um, then the thinner, the, the better, the swing will be, become better. And then this is the simulation result. We show that um, with optimized device, the swing can be as low as 20 millivolts per decade. And then, um, so to summarize, um, NCFAC can operate hysteresis free, hysteresis free, and then there are some design window that can need to be considered to decide. So thank you. So how, how close is this to uh, being implemented? I know you have some results on a capacitor. The uh, capacitance value was somewhat canceled. Uh, but how close is this to being implemented in a device? So we uh, try very hard to fabricate a device. So after a couple of years, we finally fabricated some working device. But the swing is still not less than 60 millivolt. It's about 100 millivolt per decade. But we're getting, get, getting there. Question is, is there a ferroelectric material that fits all of those uh, constraints and limits that you identified? Okay. Yeah, so, um, so to first order, we can think um, to change the slope. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, uh, okay. So in order, uh, so we're looking at this uh, CFE value. So if we change the um, thick, so it depends on the coercive field and the polarization of the ferroelectric cell. So, so far, um, we have working on PCT, but also we have identified some other new materials that most likely will be even better to uh, to 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 put to use into these devices. Thank you. I have a question. Uh, is this device uh, you know, measurement depends on uh, frequency from DC to very high frequency? Uh, yes. So. Um, Yes, it depends, but uh, the, the material itself, um, sorry, the material itself, um, how fast the material can switch. So this is a paper from Vermesh, uh published in 2004, and he measured the the, um, the switching speed of the material is about 220 picoseconds, and the theoretical speed is about tens of picoseconds. So I think it is good enough for uh, for logic use. Uh, why do you need a metal between the uh, ferroelectrics and uh, the oh. high K? So, um, so we, um, so because our simulation, um, we try to because uh, there is a different uh, potential from the source to the drain. So that uh, when we do the simulation, um, we need to do a full 2D simulation in order to to realize the effect. So that. That way we try to put a metal right here so that the electric field or the potential will be even at that interface. So that we only do a 1D simulation to, to represent the full electric effect. So, but uh, for more rigorous um, simulation, we should do a full 2D simulation to capture the full effects of a different potential change from source to drain. So uh, maybe I will make a comment on that, uh, is that even in an, I'm here, <laughs> and uh, I'm Saif Salahuddin. So uh, even in experimental device, if possible, we would like to have that metal because what it does is it takes away the 2D field variation in the MOSFET, which could have broken the ferroelectric into many domains. 
So it does help uh, even from a physical point of view, whether in the fabrication process we can put it in or not, that's a different question. But it's not only a simulation trick. It, it is something that we would want. And also a second comment about the choice of ferroelectrics. Uh, what we have figured out is that uh, the ferroelectric properties uh, depend very heavily on the strain. So once you put it on silicon, we actually need to see how it behaves. So what we are looking at now are ferroelectrics like uh, BSTO, where you can actually change the stoichiometry to change the properties as well over a large range. So we believe that ferroelectrics like those are probably uh, much more appropriate. Thanks.